This question here, as with many in complex numbers and extension two as a whole, looks a whole lot worse than it actually is. So let's read it together, try and unpack what's going on and then bite it into a few different size chunks that we can tackle together. Given that uh, z equals, and then they give you this sort of trigonometric mess, which apparently is gonna be a complex number. You can see there's a, a real part here, and then this is gonna be an imaginary part. Show that, and then you get this uh, identity over here. So this is somewhat like a trigonometric identity proof. In fact, we're gonna change this question, so basically that is essentially what it is. But you can see that they also are using this kind of new-ish notation that we've sort of uh, introduced recently, which is to take the real component of a complex number and just address that part of it. So we're going to have a look at, I'm going to say this part here, see if we can understand what that is and then take the real component and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll arrive at this part over here on the right hand side. So for starters, I'm going to take uh, the complex number that they handed to us, z equals 2 times cos theta plus i sine theta and then I'm going to substitute it into this guy over here and see what I come up with. That was messier than I intended. All right, so let's write this out. 1 on 1 minus z. I'm going to say if that is what we start with, I'll just do a straight substitution to begin with. So uh, on the denominator here, I'm going to get 1 minus 2 outside of cos theta plus i sine theta. And then on the numerator, I've still got 1 just hanging out there. Okay. So what can we do with this thing? Well, when we do division with complex numbers, as you've seen before, the key piece that we need to work with here is the conjugate, right? So the conjugate helps us to realize the denominator and then we can start to simplify things out. What's the conjugate of the denominator? Well, it's not immediately obvious in the form that it's written. I need to separate out the real part and the imaginary part, and then I'll take the opposite sign of the imaginary part. So let's do that. You can see in the denominator, if I expand, I'm going to get 1 minus 2 cos theta. And then the next thing I would write is minus 2 i sine theta. And hopefully it's now clear to us. There's two components here that sort of stand out. You've got the, let's choose an appropriate color. Actually, I'll do it this way. Um, you've got this part over here, which is the real part. And then you've got this part over here, which is the imaginary part. So I can write this in a way that makes it even more crystal clear and I'll carry on the colors that I had before. So I'm gonna go one over, and then here comes the real part, one minus two cos theta. And then here comes the imaginary part. And I'm gonna write it with that factor of i taken out the front just to make it super ultra clear. So I'm gonna have minus i, and then that leaves me with two sine theta in the brackets, as it were, just adding those so that it's clear that's the imaginary component there. All right, so now that I've written it in this form, it isn't difficult to write the conjugate. The green part, the real part stays the same, and the red part, I take the opposite sign. So I'm gonna be slightly lazy here and take this guy over here and duplicate it. So you can see I want plus that instead of minus. Uh, and I'll do it down the bottom as well. And then I'm just going to have this one bid fraction. So I'm multiplying by the same thing on the top and the bottom, which is why it doesn't end up changing. Okay, so what does this land me with? Well, on the numerator, I just have uh, one times my conjugate. So I will just write this conjugate over here, like so. I don't think I need it to be different colored anymore. Now, what do I get on the denominator? Well, the whole point of using conjugates is that this is uh, going to be in the form a minus b times a plus b. a minus b times a plus b is my difference of squares. Factorization, so I can do a squared minus b squared. What's a in this case? I'll keep my colors for this bottom part. So here comes a, one minus two cos theta, that's squared. And then what I'm gonna subtract is b squared. Now, be careful, the b squared has an i in it, so that's gonna become my negative. There's gonna be a double negative there. And then I also have two sine theta as part of b, so they're also squared. And that's all divided, okay. So, 
Now I can do a little more simplifying here, but before I do that, I just want to highlight, whenever you're doing a trigonometric identity, it's always helpful, or a proof of any kind, if you've got an equation you want to prove, it's always helpful to keep one eye on the thing that you're working on, and another eye, like sort of keeping it in your peripheral vision, on where you're trying to go, your destination, right? Because that will guide the simplifying that you do. Sometimes the factorization or the expansion you do, it, it really is dependent on where you are headed. And what I want to just point out, it's not going to change what we're doing right now, but it is kind of encouraging that if you have a look at the numerator up here, this is where I'm headed, right? Um, I have a promising sign. Let's use the right color over here. So uh, this one minus two cos theta, you can see it's appeared over here and not just has it appeared, but it is the real part of the numerator, which is of course uh, what we're going to be dealing with here. So I'll just highlight that. That's really good. It's kind of an indicator to me that I don't really need to do all too much more on the numerator. It's kind of ready to go. I just need to work with my denominator. So what do I get out of this? Well, um, my one minus two cos theta plus I two sine theta. Uh, that's just going to hang out there on the numerator. What do I get on the denominator? Well, okay, why don't we, I've gone this far, I'm going to keep the colors so that I see where I'm factorizing and expanding things from. So I'm going to do this, uh, this one minus two cos theta all squared. So I'm going to get one minus four cos theta plus four cos squared theta. So you can see that's my a squared plus two ab plus b squared. So that part's there. Uh, then when I have a look at this section here, I've got minus and then I've got an i squared. So we highlighted this double negative earlier. So this is going to become plus, plus. And then what do I get out of here? This is going to be a four and this is going to become sine squared. So four sine squared theta. And now I can complete my fraction. So this is also looking promising because if you have a look over uh, at the thing we're trying to arrive at, there's a minus four cos theta there, which matches the minus four cos theta here. And by this point, probably the wheels are turning and you see the final step of, of um, simplification that I need. This guy here, I keep on using one that's too small. This guy here, you can factor out the four, leaves you with cos squared plus sine squared, but cos squared plus sine squared, by definition, this is the Pythagorean identity, it equals one. So therefore I can say, uh, let's leave the numerator unchanged, duplicate that. Uh, I'm gonna get, uh, I'll stop with the colors now, one minus four cos theta. Oh, I will switch over to orange for this part because you can see I, I got it from here. This is four times cos squared plus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, so that just gives me four. So I'm, I'm pretty much there, aren't I? I'm on the home stretch. Uh, I'll just simplify that denominator so I get the denominator I'm supposed to get. So here comes the, um, the rest of the numerator, which hasn't changed for some time. Divided by five minus four cos theta. And because this is a prove question and you, you want to make sure like you can't, you don't get any marks for writing down the answer that was provided to you. I want to make the logic as clear as possible. So what I'm going to do is I can demonstrate that this uh, one fraction here, this one big awful fraction can be separated out into two separate fractions. Here is the real part over here on the left. And then here is the imaginary part over here on the right. And of course they share the same denominator. So this is one over one minus z. So the real part of that, 1 over 1 minus z, is just going to be this term here on the left, which is exactly what I started with. So I get to conclude with as required. So don't be intimidated by how much new notation there is and, and sort of how messy it looks. Um, if you take it one step at a time and have a look at say, okay, here's a chunk that I can deal with and I can substitute whatever information is in the question and then I can take um, other pieces and see how that comes together to give me the resu desired result. You can see that actually when you look at the sum total of the question and all the working there, we need to use what knowledge? Number one, uh, complex conjugate in order to realize the denominator. Uh, number two, we had to do a, a bit of uh, algebraic simplification, factorizing and expansion as well. And then number three, um, also this simple trig identity from um, earlier in the course in trigonometry. After that, it's just a matter of notation.